And another thing, um, now that I'm done talking about uh, horror movies, I'm going to talk a little bit about wrestling. So, uh, people who've watched um, just my hockey stuff likely wouldn't know I'm a wrestling fan. Uh, fans of this channel know I have been a wrestling fan, and it, it's been tough lately. I'm being honest. Last night, they had the big superstar shakeup, right? All I learned out of that was you can ruin War Machine. When War Machine became the War Raiders when they went to NXT, I went, okay, all right, fine. But Hanson and Rowe are legit monsters. You, you can't ruin them. You just can't. The Viking experience was born last night. That is, that is awful. And I remember the sheep herders becoming the bushwhackers. Somebody pointed that out to me on Twitter. I remember, and I remember them becoming faces that just, and they licked people, and I'm like, what the hell? I remember the sheep herders being this horrible, evil New, New Zealander <laughs> group uh, of three guys, because they had the flag boy too, and, um, you know, he'd get involved and nail people with the flag, and, uh, you know, they were fun, and then they went to WWE and became the happy-go-lucky guys. Um, I, I think part of what happens with WWE, I think there's still a, a tunnel vision, which is, okay, you watch NXT, that's fine, you're like that core wrestling audience. The general public out here watches Raw and SmackDown. They don't watch NXT. What works in NXT is not going to work here. So we're going to rebrand it when we bring them up. We're going to change them when they bring them up. Sanity is a good example. Sanity was fantastic in NXT. And they bring it up to the main roster. And I, I don't know if it was writers or just creative in general just went, well, I don't know what to do with these guys. And they did nothing with them. And now they've broken them up. So that's it for Sanity. And, and it's gone. And... In the middle of all this, we keep hearing AEW. I'm going to say this right now. AEW could be the best thing to happen to wrestling ever. Uh, AEW, when you sign there, you're not signing just an exclusive contract. So these guys are signing to wrestle there for Double or Nothing, which is coming up next month. And I am really considering checking that out and watching that because, you know, I think there's enough buzz here for me to say, yeah, this would be kind of fun to watch. At the same time... Um, you know, if they get that that weekly show, which rumor has it they're going to get one on TNT in October, they get that, that's real competition on a real network. And we keep hearing about how the Revival are upset and they want out and, and the Usos were, to, were, were, there was talk of them and then they renewed their deal. And there's a lot of wrestlers who sound like they're kind of disgruntled with WWE. And I, I get it. I do. Um, if you feel like creatively you're being stifled, if you feel like, you know, I should, I should have a shot at the spotlight. I'm not really getting it. I get that. And it used to be that you had WCW, so you could go there and, well, who am I kidding? If you wanted the spotlight, you left WCW to go to WWE. All the young, talented wrestlers who couldn't get beyond that glass ceiling left and became megastars in WWE. And it kind of feels like WWE, when you look at who's at the top, it's not as bad as WCW. I'm not going to pretend it is. This is not Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper for the 850th time. But it, it sort of feels like there's a pecking order and there are certain wrestlers that will never get ahead no matter what they do. And another company might see that potential and might give them that chance. And at the same time, the benefit to WWE is this. That guy who's whining because he wants that, that spot at the, at the top, that... that that female wrestler who's whining because she wants her spot at the top, they're gone. Now they can go somewhere else and ply their trade and yeah, go prove it somewhere else. And it doesn't really directly affect their bottom line. WWE was all Raw and SmackDown back then. So for for them, if, if Raw and SmackDown were threatened by Nitro and Thunder, well, that threatened their livelihood. They have the network now. They have their publicly traded stock. They, they really don't have that concern now. Uh, it's it's not what it was. So for me, uh, AEW coming in should help thin the herd a little bit in WWE, which is fantastic because there's way too many wrestlers. There are entirely too many wrestlers in WWE. It needs to happen. Because as much as I would love to see like Kevin Owens get pushed, Sami Zayn get pushed, well then who are you de-pushing to get them into that spot? Because there's going to be a million complaints. Dolph Ziggler left, left about a month ago. Nobody noticed. 
because there's so many wrestlers now. And, and Ziggler's a fantastic talent by himself. Bobby Roode. Roode stuck in a tag team with Chad Gable. Roode is a legit upper mid-card guy. And the, the, really, what's been done with him? So there are a lot of guys you can point out. Bray Wyatt being another one. Hasn't been on TV in months. Now apparently he's a Bird Raptor doll person. Uh, thanks to Russell Talk for, for the term Bird Raptor that I will never forget. But... It, it, you know, apparently with Bray, it wasn't that he got hurt. It was just that they had nothing to do with him. They had no, creative had nothing for him. So enter AEW. AEW can can take those wrestlers who are at the end of their contracts and are like, man, I'm tired of this, who would have per previously said, well, I'm staying with WWE because that's where the big paychecks are, and instead gone to AEW. And Chris Jericho, while not telling exactly how much he's making, has said he's making more money for AEW. At least I believe the quote was he makes more money now with AEW than he ever did in WWE. So this is a company that has some clout and has some money because there's a billionaire behind it. But the idea is that as long as that billionaire is funding it and as long as the wrestlers are, are, are putting the shows together and you got to watch the booking part because some of what Kevin Nash did back in the day, yeah, and you've got to make sure the wrestlers don't have too much say in the creative and too and that's that's the the balancing act give wrestlers some say you can still have final say but make them feel like they're an important part of the product and i get the feeling you'll get more emotion out of them uh when i watch some some episodes of raw and smackdown now there's just there's these scripted promos like dana brooke last week what the hell was that I, i'd like to congratulate becky and i'm not at the front of the line as a challenger but i'm not at the back okay I'm not good enough to be the best, but I'm not the worst. That's the greatest promo ever. Oh, that's, that's, who told her to say that? We got to get you out there, Dana. I don't have anything to say. I don't know. Say this or something like that. I don't want to say that. We'll just go out and say it. Natty last night in the ring. I want to challenge you because you're great, Becky. And then out comes Lacey Evans. I was told by the powers that be that I can get a shot at the title if I can beat Natalia. They got rid of uh, the whole power structure thing a few months ago. Now it's just in there whenever it makes sense for the story. It's just... I'm greatly looking forward to what AEW does because I do believe it will be the best thing to happen to wrestling over 20 years. And uh, they will not label wrestlers the Viking experience. I have to say, um, taking a wrestler's name and putting experience behind it, it's, it's really funny. And I would expect there to be so much mocking on social media and with the signs fans bring to the arena as well of the whole viking experience name that it's an absolute shame because when when they were war machine back in roh and you'd have war machine against the briscoes some of those matches were fan flipping tastic and then you know you throw in the young bucks and you have a super kick party off the charts and I understand that for a lot of a lot of casual fans, they'd have no idea what any of that means or who any of those people are. That's where AEW needs to bring those guys forward. There are a lot of guys who, despite the bloat in WWE, there's still a lot of guys on the indie scene and in ROH and in other companies who can wrestle very, very well. And I think we, we now have a landscape that can support two very healthy companies. And hopefully AEW ends up with some kind of a partnership with ROH as well. Bring those guys in, promote them a little bit, send them back home. ROH gets to grow a little bit. The healthier that wrestling is, uh, the the better things are for, for wrestlers, the better things are for, for us as fans. And if AEW decides at any point to say, these guys are our employees and we're going to give them benefits, yeah, then, then we're really into, into an interesting conversation, aren't we? All right. That being said, I'm going to cut this off here. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, as always. AEW, good for WWE, bad for WWE. I'm on the side of it's good. Competition is always good. It makes their product better. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.